Happy New Year, everybody. I hope you guys had a wonderful day yesterday. I hope you've put 2019 behind you and you're ready to take on 2020. It is finally here. Let's get ready to go. That being said, I'm fully cognizant of the fact that we are all suffering from a bit of a holiday hangover, whether it's too much booze, food, family, sunshine, fill in the blank. Today's probably that day after a late night last night that you just want to chill. And that's perfect because you'll never guess, but I've got work for you that will fit chilling perfectly. What all you need is a bit of time, some paper, pens, highlighters. Let's get cracking. First up, successful goals are super, super specific and super, super clear. And it's really the difference between aiming at a big amorphous target versus aiming straight at the bullseye. So the more specific and clear you can get with your goals, the more likely you're gonna be going straight for them. Weight loss, really, really common goal. I want to lose weight. Let's get specific. I'm guessing most people who have a weight loss goal are actually talking about fat. And there's a very big difference between how you lose water and how you lose fat. Okay, we know you want to lose fat. How long do you want to lose it for? Is it a short-term loss or is it a long-term loss? In which case, again, strategy will be very different. Does it need to be a sustainable program of weight loss? Or does it need to be something that's just, you've got a matric dance coming up, you need to get in that dress and you really don't care if you have to put on a few kilos after the dance. So to redefine, I want to lose weight, you might say instead, I want to lose six kilos of fat, predominantly around my belly, and I want to lose it for the long term. Another classic I hear all the time is I want to get fit this year. Let's get super clear on what fitness is. It's very different for an ultra marathoner to get fit than it is for a weight weightlifter. Ultra marathoners, they're going to need speed, endurance, and aerobic conditioning for their heart. A weightlifter is going to need strength, explosive speed and highly anaerob anaerobic training to get fit. Most people are not endurance athletes or weightlifters, so they are probably looking for, when they say, I want to get fit, what they probably mean is, I want to be more agile, more flexible. I want to feel stronger when I lift my kids. I want to be able to walk up the stairs without running out of breath. So that's a very different set of fitness criteria. But I'm gonna challenge the fitness goal as well, because often when people say, I want to get fit, what they really mean is, I want to lose fat. And again, be clear, because if you're wanting to lose fat and get fit, those are two kind of separate things, and you'll tackle them in two different ways. Um, there's a little bit of overlap, but fitness usually happens in the gym, and weight loss or fat loss usually happens in the kitchen. Another great example of, that I've heard recently is uh, somebody said, I really want to spend much less time on my iPhone. Okay, let's break that down, let's get really specific. How much time are you spending? How much less time do you want to spend? What do you want to do with that extra time that you're freeing up? And that's probably where the goal really sits. It's not so much about the iPhone, it's probably more about wanting to spend more time with my kids, working on my new business, sleeping, <laughs> uh, taking better care of myself. So the I want to spend less time on my iPhone goal can actually be redefined as I want to spend more time doing X, Y, Z and to do that, I will spend, I will focus on cutting back my time on my iPhone. With emotional goals, so I want to feel happier, I want to feel more confident. They can be a little bit more tricky to drill down. Happiness, we'll take happiness as an example. Um, if you were to get specific about happiness, you might say something like, I want to laugh more. I want to feel joy when I see my family and friends. I want to look forward to going out during the day. Um, and as you start to whittle those down, then we've got these sort of manageable, smaller pieces that we can start creating strategies around. Laughter is an easy one. I mean, turn off the news, start watching Trevor Noah, and you've got yourself some giggles. So, and you know, I fully think that that's a really great way to start feeling happier, is to turn off the news and start watching things that make you happy. Do more of that. So we've got the idea that specificity is key. And if anybody's struggling with how to get really specific on their goals, please don't hesitate to uh, contact me and I'll help you drill it down. Next up, successful goals are measurable. This is kind of obvious, but again, with the ones like happiness or confidence, that measurability can be hard to find. 
But if we can find those metrics, then we can actually see that we're making progress to, towards the goals. So get clear on how you're measuring whether you are getting making progress. Three, they are rewarded. Puppy training people, it works for puppies and it works for us. So let's use it to our advantage. Basically, every time we get a reward for doing an action, um, it triggers a little bit of a dopamine hit in our brain, which is highly, highly, highly addictive. The more you reward yourself every time you do an action um, towards your goal, the more likely you are to do it again because you become addicted to the dopamine hit that you get every time it happens. I mean, just ask Facebook. Those likes and um, hearts and smiley faces are not there for shits and giggles. That's the stuff that keeps us coming back for more and more and more. There's a little rewards that we're getting for the action of posting on Facebook, which are giving us these little hits, which make us addicted to social media. So use that to your advantage if you're trying to create a goal setting um, strategy. How can you get social rewards? Ideally, you can do your own, but how can you get social rewards for the work that you're doing towards your goals? We live in this unbelievable world where there are a ton of apps that we can actually turn to now to help us achieve our goals. And I would really encourage you to do that specifically if they're apps that create a social rewards based system. It seems a bit silly, but I tell you what, <laughs> I have to confess, I got onto Zwift, which is a indoor training. Um, uh, you can use it for cycling and running. And I just thought, great, this, you know, this will control the trainer and program the trainer. So I don't have to sit kind of with just music and do it myself. And sure enough, I'm completely addicted to Zwift. Why? Because I'm super competitive and people give me thumbs up when I'm doing really well. You know, it's so embarrassing, but it works. And if it's getting me fit and getting me towards my goal, hell yeah, I'm going to do it. Next up, successful goals are empowering. Our words are our thoughts and they're so important. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, is the way we're wording our goal, is it empowering us or is it punishing us? And the difference is going to be massive. So let's make sure you've got this bit right, because you don't need to change the goal, but you can change the way you're wording the goal. If your goal has the wording stop, quit, give up, lose, um, cut out in it, then there's a good chance it's going to be a punishing goal and it needs to be turned into an empowering goal for you to actually want to do it. I want to stop eating chocolate. I want to quit chocolate. I want to cut it out of my diet. Okay, do you really want to quit chocolate? I'm pretty sure you quite like chocolate. Chances are you don't actually want to quit chocolate, right? So let's turn that around. Just because you don't really want to quit chocolate doesn't mean that you shouldn't quit chocolate. Maybe you've got a health issue and you really need to cut it out, but you don't want to cut it out. So it's a should. And that word should, ooh, Lord, it's a problem. Because should, when you say I should, da, 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 you, pr you, not probably, you definitely mean I don't really want to, but I have to. Or I think other people think I must. If you're not doing it for your own desire, 0% chance of it working. <laughs> How do we rephrase that goal in a way that makes us want to actually quit the chocolate? And there's a couple of tricks you can use here. Change it to, I get to, or I choose to. So I get to quit chocolate because X, Y, Z, or I choose to quit chocolate because X, Y, Z. So that's immediately empowering me. But my favorite, favorite, favorite one is, I'm so lucky that I get to quit chocolate. So I'm so lucky that I get to, da, 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 put in the goal there. You'll find what's amazing is if you repeat that a few times, your brain starts to find evidence to support it. It's called the con it's called confirmation bias and it works brilliantly. So I'm so lucky that I get to run every morning at 5 a.m. before work. So clearly I don't really want to run, but I have to run. I feel like it's going to be good for me. You say that a few times and then you go, wow, you know, I am so lucky that I get to run in the morning because I hear the birds singing or I've got some quiet time to myself and it's so nice and cool and fresh and the air is so lovely and there's no cars on the road. And suddenly you've come up with all these reasons why something you didn't actually want to do is something you get to do and you feel lucky that you get to do it. So now your brain's like, yeah, baby, give me more of that. Fabulous. We are making progress and it's time to go straight into the strategy now. It's actually not that important that you get the strategy right. You might prefer to go for a nice meandering drive through the back alleys of something to get to a place, or you might just want to bomb it down the highway. I don't really mind how you get there. Just choose the route you're going to enjoy the most because it's the one you'll stick with. Okay. So when you're looking at strategy, I encourage you to brainstorm 
everything you can think of. Look at the highway, the back alleys, you know, going boat, by plane, by car, by train. Just put it all on paper, brainstorm the whole shebang. Then what you're gonna do, you've brainstormed it, you put it on paper, grab a highlighter. Now, have a look at all these ideas. Which are the ones that you you actually look forward to doing? Which are the ones that you think, yeah, I could nail that, highlight it. Of those ones, which well, now we're going to use the 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule is essentially saying that 80% of your success will come from 20% of your actions. So have a look at the things that you've highlighted and your instinct will know immediately which is the one that is going to be the 80%. Which is the one thing that you could do that would give you 80% of the results. Start there start there you can worry about those other things you want to tackle later start with the 80 percent because you need some real mo uh, momentum and traction and the last thing i want to share with you today is that success happens in bite-sized little pieces and i would take that further and say the smaller you can make those bites the more manageable those bites the more successful you'll be if you think you need to do 30 minutes decide on 20. boom make it so that you cannot fail the US Marines say that slow is smooth and smooth is fast. I love that. It's so true. Take it slowly. Take it manageably. Make the, make the action steps so small that you can't not do them. They're just too easy to get done. Woo, we covered a lot today. So by now you should have your goals specific, measurable, empowering, and with a little reward system in place. And you should have brainstormed your strategy and picked 20% of the actions that are going to create 80% of the results. So your challenge today is to take one of those actions and to start putting it into action. So do one thing, one small thing, make a call, book an appointment, any small thing to send you in the direction of your dreams. Thanks guys, I'll see you tomorrow.